Um, so we are going to welcome Tracy Austin today. She works with our competency and initiatives um, and analytics in the Center for Career and Professional Development. And today she is going to walk through competencies and why they matter. Um, thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions as Tracy is going through, please feel free to drop, drop them into the chat um, and she will um, answer at the end and I will jump back on to moderate some of those questions, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce and let Tracy go ahead. Thanks so much, Alex. Uh, excited uh, to have you join us today and talk a little bit about what are core competencies and why do they matter? If you will, either on your phone or your device, go to menti.com and use the code 30939461. That will allow you to ask me questions and then I can get some feedback from you as well as we go throughout our session. So give you just a, a few seconds to get to Minty and then get signed in with the code. That code will appear on each of our slides. And we're gonna start off with a question. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What aspect of your personality adds the most value to any team? So we'll go to menti.com, enter that code. And then once you get there, wanna see what part of yourself, like what part of who you are adds value to any team or project that you're a part of? Okay, so we have some answers coming in. We have passion. Um, we have a good listener, someone who's organized. A, a couple people are organized, making sure that things stay on track. So kind of organizing with time. Lead by example. Looks like we have one over here. Team player. Uh, being outspoken, able to see other people's opinions and values. It's really important as you move through your career search to begin to think about what is it about me that adds value? It allows you to be um, really helpful in your teams and your projects, but it also will help you communicate that value to future teams, to future employers. So we're gonna dig into our competencies today and let's back up and think about our mission as a center just very quickly. As you're working on this professional development certificate, we want you to know about the center's mission to engage students in career development and experiential learning in a way that will empower you to uh, pursue your goals. We also want you to know about our diversity statement. We want to welcome everyone. We want to make sure that our materials and our content is accessible by everyone. So if you're ever in any of our sessions and need something different, please feel free to let us know. The Center for Career and Professional Development is organized into three teams. Um, so we have the Michelin Career Center where you have your career fair and counseling. And then we have our UPIC program, which is our on-campus internship program and then cooperative education where they do extended experiential learning in, in an actual company. Certainly want you to know how to get in touch with us if you would like to make an appointment and dig deeper a little bit into the competency work. You can reach us at cucareercenter at gmail.com and we do offer drop-ins, which are short 15-minute sort of unscheduled interactions. You can just pop by on Monday and Wednesdays during the summer and then we can also schedule you an appointment so that you can have a dedicated time to maybe talk about two or three, two or three things. So tell me, what do you think employers want most in a candidate? What do you think employers want to see most in a candidate? Maybe even graduate school committees, folks that are looking to bring you on board, what do they want to see? So they want to see folks who are willing to learn integrity, uh, that you have the ability to adapt, that you can be open-minded, you have a strong 
work ethic, dedication, a good communicator, consistency with your performance, that there's a little bit of loyalty with the way that you operate with your team and that you have some leadership skills. We use different words, but in a lot of ways, the things that you told me that you bring value to a team are these same things that you're saying that employers want to see in a candidate and, and you're right on target. We're going to dig into this concept of what employers want, and we've done a lot of research to kind of summarize that for you, and that's where we settled on core competencies. But you are right on target with thinking about what employers are looking for and um, thinking about the concept of the competency. So we've identified non-competencies. We've divided them up into three categories, so you can kind of think about them in terms of groups, but communication, collaboration, leadership, many of the things that you mentioned, adaptability, analytical skills or thinking critically, technology, and then professionalism. Do I have some self-awareness? Do I know where I need to grow? Do I know how I think and communicate? Integrity and ethics and brand. And when we think about, we're gonna dig into all of these, but when we think about brand, that really reflects back to reputation. What do other people think about me? This all goes into our career development model with learn, act, flex, succeed. So as we work and grow our proficiency within the competencies, we're gonna learn, we're gonna practice, and then we're gonna make some adjustments and we're gonna flex and then we're gonna learn again and just keep that process going. And through that process, that's where we find success. As we move into our careers, um, these are things that all professionals are working to grow in. It's not something that we expect students to um, become experts in before they graduate. It's something that is a part of our performance evaluation in the center. How are we growing? And it's important to kind of stay on top of your growth and where we need um, to um, kind of target and where we feel like we have some comfort. So when we use this word competency, it feels strange. We don't use this in our normal vocabulary very much. So just kind of wanted to break this down for you. When we talk about competency, this is really where our knowledge, our skills, and our attitudes, our behaviors intersect. So sometimes we can have a value and we cannot walk in that value. So I want to be healthy, but I just don't get up and exercise. And so when we are really competent in that area, it's when that knowledge of I know I should do this and I can do this, that skill and our behavior follows. Everything's in alignment. That's when we begin to develop competency within an area. So why is it important to think about competencies? Well, we talked a little bit about what employers are looking for. And one of the things that we've seen through some other research is that the average professional has 15 jobs in a lifetime. So it used to be that you went and you had training and you went to a job and maybe you got promoted to kind of supervise that same job. But now it's much more of a spiral where we're thinking about a career path and how much can I get from my degree? There's also a 20% chance of relocating for the for a job and then some folks are going to work on either time or project-based contracts so at the end of six months i'm done with this project or maybe when these objectives are completed i'm done with this project so with all this moving around you can kind of see how it's important to not just be skilled on a couple of particular tasks but to really be able to demonstrate that I can work well with the team, that I can stay on top of a project like you guys mentioned at the beginning. So we will send out this slide deck, but I want you to have these resources available so that you can access them and get back into them later, but we'll make sure that you um, get this deck at the end. So when we think about um, the role of our resume or our interview or our job offer, it's always to kind of keep working toward the next thing. So when we're thinking about our resume, the goal of that is to secure an interview. And then when we're in that interview situation, it's to see if we can get that offer. Once we have the offer, our growth, our reflection does not stop. It's how can we continue to develop professionally? So we want to make sure through all of these um, methods that we are making sure that we're introducing our professional self, that we're highlighting our education and experience and our skills. We're being very 
clear about our training and how it connects to the role that we're applying for. So that's where we would say that word articulate. We want to be very clear with how my work as a middle school teacher a long, long time ago impacts my work that I'm doing today in a, in a with the college students. We also want to make sure through all of these settings that we're demonstrating the impact and the outcomes of our work. So we might see that you've done a lot of things. We can see how it connects, but we need to know how successful it was. So as you move throughout this certificate program throughout the summer, you're going to want to think about how can I demonstrate the impact and the outcomes on my resume and through my interview. Okay, so let's dig in a little bit to each of the competencies. We're going to talk through these and then we're going to take a little break at each section and see where we've demonstrated um, a proficiency within these areas. So when we think about communication, it can be really easy to think about presenting or talking, but communication is really very complex. We need to think about our nonverbal cues. We need to think about the body language and how, what are we giving off? Whenever I was preparing for interviews, I started recording myself on my um, iPad. And whenever I did that, I realized, ooh, whenever I get really into something that I'm really serious about, I'm really kind of excited about, I get this kind of super serious face and it looks like a mad. How can I make sure that my nonverbal cues are matching up with the way that I really feel and what I want people to feel when they're with me? How can I adjust my communication style for my audience? How can I make sure that um, I'm not going to um, one particular uh, group and presenting the same way I would with another group that has different goals and different backgrounds? If I'm thinking about a work setting with communication, how can I make sure that if I'm coming in and proposing uh, that I go to a conference, I need to think about what are the questions that my boss might have? He might wanna know like, how much is it? How long are you gonna be away? Where is it? What is the value that this conference is gonna have? So how can I anticipate other people's reactions and prepare for their questions? It makes things more streamlined and allows my supervisor to see, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's affordable, it's within our budget. Or it gives him a heads up to go, you know, we'd love for you to go, but I'm not sure if we can swing it right now. It prevents that back and forth with, what about this and what about this? And then how can I make sure that I'm engaging in dialogue and communication that provides for productive outcomes and not just kind of getting stuck with a power struggle? When we think about collaboration, we want to develop um, authentic and mutually beneficial relationships. So we don't want to just have connections. We want to make sure that we're being good resources for other people and that we're leaning on the resources that we have within our network. So whenever I kind of think about building my network, it's really about building my toolkit. Uh, there are people on our team that I can go to and kind of say, hey, help me think through this. And then if I have a different kind of challenge in front of me, I can go to other people and, and they have the skills to help me be more successful. How can I then help them in return? How can I make sure that I'm developing a network across a broad spectrum of people? So there might be some folks who don't work in my field, but would have really good insight on how I can streamline processes. Or maybe they can give me insight on how they've increased engagement in their area, even if it's totally different than mine. How can I make sure that I'm seeking to learn from others? How can I um, be sure to navigate conflict successfully? There's gonna be times through um, out our work uh, settings where we're going to have different perspectives on what should be prioritized or how we should tackle a certain challenge. How do I approach that conversation and, and make sure that I'm allowing for others to be heard and that I'm allowing myself to grow from their perspective as well? And if I'm thinking about uh, one of you mentioned being a good teammate, how do I uh, what do my teammates think about me? How can I make sure that I'm being a good teammate? Well, one way is to uphold commitments, to be where I say I'm going to be, to do the things that I say I will do. If I agree to do a project and then a, you know, a couple of days before it's due, I say, you know what, I just haven't been able to get to this. It puts stress on all of my team. So how can I make sure that I'm communicating and collaborating with them in a way that really allows people to want to work with me? 
When we think about leadership, I want you to think about leading people, but also leading projects. And one of you mentioned at the very beginning that you are good at organizing things and making sure that things stay on task. And that would kind of relate to projects. So how can I make sure that if I'm leading a project that we're that we have a vision that maybe we have a timeline that we have clear systems of how our work is going to come together. Maybe we've set out our meetings in advance and we know when we're going to get together. If I'm thinking about working with the team, I want to make sure that I'm really capitalizing on the strengths of all the individuals in the group that I'm utilizing what they're what they're best at, where they feel comfortable. Um, how can I make sure that there's not something that I'm missing? How can I get, gain knowledge from their perspective? And as a leader, I wanna make sure that I'm empowering others to um, work toward this shared vision and receive credit and develop their skills and grow. Okay, so um, feel free to come off mute to kind of talk about this one, but I want to give you just a minute to think. As you think back on your academic, your work, or your volunteer experiences, think about a time where you really felt heard, supported, or valued. What was happening um, during that particular moment? What, what challenge was, uh, you, were you faced with? How did other people help you feel valued, help you feel supported? And, and how did you um, move through this challenge as a result of their support? So I'll give you just kind of a minute to think about it and then I'll let you unmute. You're certainly welcome to type it into the question box if you'd like, but if you'd like to share quickly, that, uh, that would also be good, great as well. Can anybody think about a time where you felt supported? Maybe it was kind of a time when things went really well. Anybody want to share? So I'll give you an example, and then I'd still like to hear from you. Um, as we think about these examples, it's really helpful for future projects where we're trying to think about our resume or where we're trying to share examples in interviews. So I wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to think of one for yourself. Uh, recently, I was working on a project and it was quite detailed and pretty cumbersome. It was taking me several hours to complete. And it was one of those types of things where, um, you, you really needed to kind of do it all in one stretch, but it was also so tedious that it was hard to do that. So it was taking a lot of time to complete. And I went to my supervisor and talked to him about it. He was like, oh no, we don't need to do it that way. Let's scale that back a bit. And what we ended up settling on is giving us the same results, but it's taking um, about 30 minutes for me to complete as opposed to several hours and having to block off a day. It really made me feel valued that he trusted what I was telling him, that he knew that I had given this one method a good you know, effort and um, it, felt so great to, to kind of hear that he was willing to take my recommendation and alter our process. Anybody else want to share very quickly? Okay, we have one in the chat. In high school, I was president of a volunteering club and had a supportive vice president and executive board who made sure that you, uh, you weren't overwhelmed or swamped in work. They made big decisions much easier and you always felt valued and supported. That's amazing. It's so nice to think about it. So as you're thinking about these examples, think about the way that those people supported you and then consider how you can support others in similar ways. So as I think about um, the work that happened in your uh, 
volunteering club, think about the way that they made decisions much easier. How did they monitor to make sure you weren't overwhelmed or swamped with work? How were projects divided up? And then maybe I can apply some of those same principles to the future group project in class or a, a volunteer organization that I'm a part of now. Okay, so let's keep going. We're gonna look at our next set of competencies. And we're gonna start with adaptability. So adaptability, flexibility, we, we know a lot about what this looks like. And I think we all kind of think we're adaptable until it's, it's, until it's time to adapt. And then it's not quite as much fun as it sounds like. So as we think about adaptability, I, I really want you to think about how can I seek to grow in my skills? How can I consider a new approach to this? Maybe the way that I approached it in the past worked for the past, but maybe there's some other parameters that have developed and and it gives me an opportunity to reconsider and relook at how I've either, either thought about that or gone about managing it. Uh, it's important to know with adaptability and flexibility that challenges and even failure are part of the learning process. So we talked about that learn, act, flex, succeed. We're going to go through and we're going to come across things where we go, oh, we tried that and it just didn't work. And it's important to, to stay calm and grounded and know that we can then begin to tweak. And now we know more than we knew before. When we think about technology, um, we want to make sure that we're growing, that we're using the current and emerging tools, that we're kind of staying on top of what's coming up so that uh, we can work more efficiently. In a lot of departments, you're seeing budget, uh, budget cuts and kind of crackdowns, and sometimes technology can help you leverage um, the work of a, a staff member sometimes. So using and knowing about these platforms can really help um, you in your work and make things more efficient and um, help you move through. With technology, we also kind of want to focus in on how can I troubleshoot on my own before I begin to ask for assistance. So one of the members on our team, Brittany, she's someone that whenever I joined a couple of years ago, it was very clear that people would come to her for technology questions. So it showed me that she kind of had that brand or that reputation of being skilled in this area, where they would come to her and say, hey, I can't get this to work. Can you help me? And it allowed me to know that, hey, she can be my contact too, or she can be someone that I can go to and brainstorm about how to set up certain processes or how to think about certain tasks. Um, and um, when we think about how we can serve as a resource for others, that helps us increase our value to that team. Technology is kind of one of those areas. And when we think about competency growth, a lot of times we think like, oh, I'm going to get to this point and I'm going to check this off the list. We talked about before that it's a cycle. It's constantly growing. Before the pandemic, I would have told you that I felt like I was you know, pretty technology savvy, but then whenever we began to shift in new ways, I was forced to work with technology in some ways I never had before. And I learned that this is more of a dimensional growth and that each role that you enter is gonna call you to use uh, certain skills that you might not have used in the past. Okay, so let's think about um, in the past, when have you faced a challenge? What steps did you take to move forward? How did you make those decisions and how have you adjusted your goals or plans? Make sure we got them all. Oh, we skipped analytical skills. Let's go back and grab this one and you can think about your challenge as we do. So analytical skills, critical thinking, this one is a kind of hard one to see because it's not necessarily an action. It's kind of more of what's happening inside. But as we're beginning to um, think about what does that look like? What are some sample behaviors? This might be where we would be able to make a recommendation for a course of action, or we could understand a problem and say, hey, I think we should handle, maybe we should try this. Um, this is where we can look at different ways of obtaining information or processing information, where I'm going to think critically about what I'm being told. Um, I might not just accept receiving this one way. I'm, I might go and see if I can find these results in multiple ways. How do I uh, 
take the information and the experience that I have and allow that to help me develop uh, solutions to problems. So a lot of times with analytical skills, it's what's happening here before you start the action. But don't forget to articulate that in your resume or on your in your interviews because it helps employers know that you can think critically. And if you have that skill of thinking critically, it doesn't really matter what the task is or the project or the field or the area is, they know that they can trust you to make good decisions. Okay, so we'll go back and think about a challenge. When did you face a challenge? What steps did you take to move forward? What influenced your decisions and how have you adjusted your plans? So pop it in the chat or unmute. I'll give you a couple minutes to think through that one. Okay, so I'm not letting you off the hook, but I'll share one. So a lot of times for me, I have to um, kind of a challenge that I kind of create for myself is I'll put together, uh, I'll have this vision of what this project can look like or, or what I'm going to accomplish in a day. And I constantly have to adjust that because um, it takes me longer than I think I will, or maybe I just don't have as much time. So a lot of times I'm having to um, say, here's what I hope for, and then I'm going to go down and edit and say, you know what, this is still really quality, even though I didn't get as far as I wanted to. So we have a couple in the chat. We had um, one where there was uh, friction with an employer, uh, realized that they weren't communicating effectively, and identified points of conflict and started having weekly, weekly sync meetings to ensure they were on the same page. This is so common. It can happen really easily. Sometimes we use the same words and they mean different things in both of our minds and from our perspectives. And having those things like weekly uh, sync meetings can really be helpful to make sure that we're, we think we're talking about the same thing, but are we really? And then we have another uh, example in the chat. Um, when faced with challenges, I would turn to someone I consider to be a great resource and talk it out and discuss next steps. They helped me evaluate different options and go, go forward. This is a great thing to do, and I, I like to call it consulting. So maybe I've kind of considered some options, but there could be something I'm missing. And sometimes when I go to someone that I trust, they can see that thing that I'm not seeing, and it can be really helpful to consider to consult with others. So as you're thinking about your example that's in your mind, you know, what was this challenge? What steps did you take to move forward? How did you make these decisions? Begin to think about some examples that you can share with employers in interviews. This exa these examples that, that you both shared in the chat are amazing because it shows that hey, we're not, gonna, we're not just gonna settle for poor communication. We're gonna work through this. We're gonna think critically to identify these points of conflict and we're gonna solve it. We're gonna try to get on the same page together. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so self-awareness is one that can sometimes be not so much fun, but um, it can be really, really helpful to be tuned in and self-aware. So we want to make sure that how we think, how we communicate, that we're aware of it. So when I talked earlier about noticing that I kind of had this super serious kind of mad face. If I go to an interview like that, especially with someone that doesn't know me, they're not going to know that I'm just in the zone. They're gonna think, did we do something to upset her? Is she upset? Does she not want this job? Those are not the things that I want. And in my work, if I'm working with students and I'm getting really serious faced about it, they might begin to self doubt themselves about, does she want to work with me? She may, she may just be annoyed that I'm here. So making sure that we're working to evaluate how we communicate and think and um, those nonverbal cues and, and the way that we articulate our ideas can be really helpful to reduce um, conflict. 
how can I make sure that as I'm moving through that I'm reevaluating my goals as we need to? Um, so maybe I had this goal of accomplishing this and then parameters changed, the time frame changed, and I had to adjust my plan. How do I make sure that I'm managing my own stress and emotions and making sure that I'm being careful to not place stories on others? So uh, just a real quick story. Whenever I was student teaching, I really wanted to do a good job. I was doing, I was kind of in that section where you just do a couple of lessons a semester and I was getting ready to have a meeting with my professor soon and I had a lesson. And so I was doing the lesson and the teacher of the classroom who was observing me, she was standing at the back and she had this tablet and she kept taking notes and she had her head down and she's taking notes constantly. She'd kind of look up every once in a while and write something else down and then she'd flip to the next page real fast and kind of hard. And as we're going through this lesson, I'm just like, oh my gosh. I feel like this was a pretty good lesson, but obviously there are so many things that she needs to tell me after it was over. So I went up and I talked to her and I said, hey, you know, do you have any feedback for me? And she said, that was great. And I was like, well, you know, if there are things I can improve, I really want to know. And she was like, well, honestly, I can't really think of anything. I think it was perfect. You know, it was awesome. She was like, and finally, I just said, you know what? If there's something going on that I need to know about, please talk to me so that I can try to fix it before we go to my professor. And she was like, I really don't know what to say to you. It was good. And I said, well, what were, what's with all the notes you were taking? And she was kind of like, notes? I wasn't taking any. I was like, yes, you were doing all this writing. And she was like, oh, that was my grocery list. So not only was she pleased with what I was doing, but she felt so comfortable. She could kind of tune out but I had read all this other stuff into it. So how can we make sure that we're being aware of kind of that message that's running in our own mind? When we think about integrity and ethics, we wanna make sure that we are where we're supposed to be, that we're present and we're prepared. If I'm going to a meeting, do I have something to take notes with? Do I have information? Have I prepared information that might be helpful for this particular group? Am I going to show up for the things that I say I will or, or do I cancel? Whenever I was teaching, there was this one teacher who always took off on Mondays. You could not depend on her to be there on a Monday. How do I make sure that I'm, you know, we talked about that Venn diagram at the beginning that I'm acting in alignment with my values and my principles and not just saying I, I feel this way, but my actions really follow. How do I make sure that I'm treating others fairly? Um, with that self-awareness piece, there's how can I kind of look for bias? And when we think about integrity and ethics, it's so important to make sure that we're being inclusive and being equitable. How do I show and demonstrate a high level of dedication? You, got, you told me this at the beginning, you're very dedicated, you're passionate. You know that, so how, what are some ways that that um, dedication and, um, high quality work shows up. And then when we think about brands, sometimes we think this is marketing or my, maybe my logo or my colors, but really this is, what do other people think about you? So I told you about Brittany on our team and technology, people connected her with that resource. They go to her to help think through that problem. And we all have those things that people come to us for, but begin to kind of see what are they coming to me for? What, what do other people think about me? This is oftentimes a question you'll get in an interview. It's important to know. How do I accept responsibility? Do I meet my deadlines? Uh, do, um, Am I responding to other people in a way? Well, I can, you know, I can give that project Tracy, but I probably won't hear from her for a while. So I'm not sure if we should give it to her or not. How do I make sure that um, I'm being sensitive and focusing on the person instead of um, maybe other issues at hand first? Um, so how do I manage their concerns and complaints? Do I listen? Do I take in or do I dismiss them and kind of move forward? Okay, so we, uh, we're going to think about that set, but we had another one add to the chat. And um, Alexis just kind of followed up and said with her advisory board, uh, they helped talk through problems and helped people see things in a new light. Having those folks that you can trust to help give you perspective is so helpful. Okay, so let's do one more reflection. Feel free to put it in the chat or come off mute. 
think about a time when things went really, really well. Like, what distinguishes you from other people? You told me a little bit about this at the beginning, but when you contribute to a project, when do you feel most like yourself? Um, what would people you have worked with say about you? So I'll give you a couple minutes to think, kind of get it typed in if you'd like, or you can unmute if you'd like to share. Someone mentioned, there were two people who mentioned at the beginning that you're an organizer, and that's definitely something that I can identify with. And whenever I contribute to a project, I really feel um, successful if I'm putting things in order, whether it's chronological order with content, or maybe it's a progressive developmental order, or it might be uh, something kind of totally different and it might be a system or how can I set this up and what can we automate? That's when I get excited. Okay, so we have one in the chat. Feel free to keep adding if you if you'd like. Um, we have um, when given a task, they do not need to worry if it's going to be completed. It will get done and it will be a good, strong quality project. So this is what other people might say about you. It's always good to kind of think about when I hire myself. Um, is this, you know, do I have the brand or the reputation that shows that I'm dependable, that shows that I can think critically, that shows that I can communicate and collaborate well? So Logan led a project and they got a hundred. Um, so maybe things went really well within leading that project and um, that grade helped reinforce and demonstrate that um, that was a successful project. If you're thinking about sharing that in an interview, it might be helpful to kind of break down the pieces, the action, the structure that you set up within that group that led you to get 100. What were some decisions that you made that others could not have made that led for that um, 100? Feel free to keep adding as we move through. I'm going to ask you to, to do one more thing for me. As you think about your time at Clemson, even if it's just kind of getting started, where have you seen yourself grow already? And you should be able to select more than one competency area. And if you just got to Clemson, you might uh, can think about the last year or so. So you can select uh, more than one competency area that fits, but where are you already seeing growth? Okay, so one of the things that I'm seeing with where we've seen growth, we see more with adaptability. We see some with leadership and communication and self-awareness. And oftentimes when I put this um, question up, analytical skills is often skipped. And it is again today. But one of the things that I would encourage you to just think and reflect and kind of unpack a little bit more for yourself is if I am demonstrating adaptability, I'm almost always demonstrating analytical skills because I've had to think about where I am and think critically about maybe where I want to be and how I need to adjust my course of action. And that's where those analytical skills are coming in. So if we're, if we're being able to kind of say, hey, this, this isn't, I'm gonna have to make an adjustment here, that's those analytical skills coming up. If I've been successful in leadership, I've had to think critically. I've had to decide who's going to take this project. When is the project going to be due? What is our timeline? Does that give us enough time to get everything completed? Do we have these pieces in place? I'm thinking critically. With communication, you might be demonstrating analytical skills there where I talked about before. What does my boss want to see when I ask to go to this conference? If you are communicating in a highly successful way, you're probably thinking critically as well. So continue to see and brainstorm if maybe you really have uh, demonstrated some analytical skills along the way. 
And uh, certainly if you're self-aware, you're beginning to think about that as well. But I'm, I'm wondering if, if maybe you have done that a little bit more than you thought maybe. Okay, so I wanna give you an opportunity to ask questions. I know this is the uh, beginning of your professional development certificate journey. So feel free to ask us anything about the competencies, the career center, or about your certificate program. You can pop it in the Zoom chat, the Minty chat, or you can unmute. We'll give you a few minutes. Sometimes it takes time to type it in, but want to make sure that you have your questions answered, that you feel confident with what we have discussed today and comfortable moving forward. Well, I work at the Career Center and I feel like I learned a lot from Tracy today. Um, and I talk about the competencies a lot, but there's still a lot of things to learn and consider. So thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Anybody have questions before we wrap it up today? Could you quickly just go, um, you know, give like maybe one or two best ways of including core competencies, like in a resume or how you present these to a uh, potential employer? When we're thinking about on a resume, um, one of the things that I kind of like to do and one of the tools that's in that digital toolkit that you, that you will get is a um, transferable skills checklist. And I like to look over my resume. I've, I've kind of started out just thinking about what did I do and how well did I do it? Now that I've got some details on my resume, I'm going to go back and I'm going to review that. And I'm going to say, am I touching each of these competency areas? Did I demonstrate where I've had some problem solving? Did I show them where I've worked with technology? Did I talk to them? Did I provide an example of where I've collaborated with others? Have I demonstrated uh, that I have integrity and ethics? And that might be hard to do in a resume, but maybe I can show that through my professional associations or my volunteer work. And then in an interview, a lot of times um, they might say, tell me about a time when, and that's where I can provide an example. And when you think of those examples of um, here's where I worked on this volunteering club and, and here were some challenges that we were faced with. And I was fortunate enough to work with an advisory board and some folks there that really managed um, our uh, work schedule, that's something that I want to then turn around and do as a leader myself, where you can give them those examples and show them the action you took or the results of those actions that can be really helpful in an interview. So in an interview, it might look like a story or a scenario and then on our resume it's going to be a little bit tighter and more concise but i'm going to kind of do that little double check and make sure i've sort of hit all these areas that they might be looking for And Alex, I can kind of hang out here if others have questions that they'd rather um, kind of ask individually. 
Sounds good to me. Um, thanks for your participation in the chat um, and for unmuting. Alexis, that was awesome to have a question, hear somebody's voice. Um, if y'all have any questions and want to hang out for a little bit, Tracy and I will be here. Um, if you've got questions about competencies or if you have questions about the program moving forward, um, but thank you so much for coming to our first session for the Professional Development Certificate Program. Um, we really appreciate that y'all are here and being a part. And if y'all do not have any questions, feel free to jump off. Um, and if you do, feel free to stay on for a few more minutes. Thank you. I just want to say hi, and I do have a question. <laughs> hi, Emily. We're happy you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so for the spreadsheet that Ms. Beth sent us where we have to fill stuff out, it says a follow-up. Is that what I do with you, Ms. Heather? Yeah, you can just follow you can just follow up with me since you're a, one of the okay. caps. If it doesn't work out for um um, for me on my schedule, you can meet with mm -hmm. any of us. It's just a one hour after you finish all four sessions. Okay, so I do it every time I finish a session or just after I finish all of them? After you finish all of them. Correct, okay. Alex? Good to know. Yeah. And then if I'm not able to go to any of the other ones, how do I get to the recordings? I'll send you an email. I'm like, okay. that'd be perfect. Thank you. Yes. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye, Emily. I'm hopping out, bye y'all. Thanks, Heather. Mm -hmm. You have a question for us? Maybe not, we'll give it a minute and then Tracy, I'll end it if that's okay. All right, I'm gonna assume she may have stepped away. Thanks Tracy, that was awesome. That was very good.